Great morning, great morning. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. I am excited and I'm on an intentional course and it is to continue to listen and follow the unctions of the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, who is our guide, who is our comforter, uh, who will be with us uh, until the time that we are transformed, um, the mortal and put on immortality. So the Spirit of the Lord is here with us. As we saw, he was with our Lord uh, when Jesus um, was birthed through the Virgin Mary and in baptized in the River Jordan. The Spirit was there with him and the Holy Spirit led him into uh, the wilderness to be tempted. It says the same Spirit um, that, was, that was with Christ that raised him from the dead is now with us. So really is the Holy Spirit is God, his Spirit. It is his Spirit. And since we know this, uh, the Lord does not dwell in unclean temples, we know that the, um, the work of Christ on the cross uh, gave us uh, abilities uh, by being born again to actually to, for the Spirit of God to dwell with us. And thank God for the Holy Spirit with us. Thank you for his guidance and thanking him for um, teaching us. And so we are continuing in Romans, the 12th chapter. And we're going to deal with the service and uh, um, di different uh, uh, aspects of the service. But as we have been studying so far from that chapter, we went back to the foundations of what it means to be a servant of God, what it means to present our bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God, which, our, which is our reasonable service. So the first thing... Unlike in some jobs, which I can say in most jobs, most high jobs, I was thinking about the things that it, uh, Romans was talking about, um, the preparation of the gospel and the gifts. And I thought about when someone becomes a lawyer, how deep they have to study, how many books they have to study, how much they have to remember. Uh, I thought about to be uh, coming a doctor uh, before going through regular um school and then on into uh, graduate uh, information and then to medical school and then to internship. So we know even in the world, you, you don't reach certain positions until you um, study, until you apply, until you, but see, unlike in the scriptures, uh, we see where it tells about um, uh, to, to uh, not to be a novice. Uh, uh, for those who are ministering in the gospel, they shouldn't be novice either, which means they shouldn't just be someone who just got born again, who haven't really matured. So in a secular world, to get to um, higher levels of jobs, they want your credentials. They want to know what you have done, and what you, what you, uh, what you have done, and um, and how you have reached us to a certain point. So. That's the same thing when it comes to the gospel of Christ, okay? So we are uh, thanking God for this little brief time that we can get on here and talk about, um, the, continue in our studies. And so I hope that it's encouraging you to know, just like on your job, they want to know your qualifications. They want to know your credentials. They want to know your experience. So that's why when it comes to the um, to the uh, the gospel, it says to study to show thyself approved to God, workmen that need not to be ashamed, rightly divide. So He doesn't want us to be a novice either. That's why we talk about um, in in the book of Timothy. It says uh, it shouldn't be a novice. So it's a lot of positions that people and and a lot of times I know in the in the uh, business world. I've been in jobs where people have come in and because they know somebody and they know these people and the people put them in position and then they ask the people underneath them to train them. <laughs> They're going to be your supervisor. Now you train them. And that's not really correct. You know, they, uh, they really need to take someone who is uh, doing the job and move and elevate them up. But because of uh, the nature of man, a lot of times, they will do things that's out of order. Okay, so we're going to pray and do a little brief this morning and cover a couple of things, okay? Talking about the gifts and not to be a novice in the work, okay? <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, we thank and praise you for your tender mercies, your loving kindness toward us. We pray that your will, your way, and your word were done in us and through us. We pray for your uh, grace over my family as we go into the word, Lord God. We thank and praise you for your peace, rest, ruling, abiding in our hearts as we yield to you our body, soul, and spirit. 
in Jesus' name. So th there's a song that says, Are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Come and be baptized into the body and forevermore abide. So you could get into this ministry and to get into this, you have to be baptized into it. It's not uh, just learning and studying the scriptures alone, but uh, to be baptized into the body of Christ, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to read 1 Timothy 3 first. Um, 1 Timothy the third chapter, because it's talking about not to be a novice um, in the ministry. Um, uh, and and we talk, talk about the bishops and the people who are ruling and the archbishops. This is what Timothy said, or Paul wrote this to Timothy. Verse 1, this is a true saying, if a man desire the office, we talk about office, a position of a bishop, he desires a good work. It is a good work to want to get to that place in Christ. A bishop must be blameless. A man who is blameless. And everybody know what blameless means. I mean, he doesn't have a reputation that he's, you know, he doesn't have a bad reputation. A bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife. A one wife. You know, well, I had one wife and now I got rid of that wife, which is calling back to the Old Testament. It, when they even asked Jesus about this one wife stuff, you know, well, man, you know, uh, uh, talk about a man who had a wife and then his brother had him, but it didn't talk about people putting away their wives. They even talked and said, well, why did Moses tell us to, uh, uh, what about divorce? Okay, which Jesus answered that too. So this person on this level should not be a person who have twisted the, tri the scriptures to fit his his own self okay and it says a bishop must then must be and the reason i say this is because when you get to be a president of the united states i thought about obama they go through your whole history your family your your family over here your family over there your brother they look through everything that because they looking for something that would disqualify you in in, in being not having a good reputation to sit in that position so it's saying the bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, uh, vi uh, vigilant, and it took us to be vigilant. The word vigilant means uh, being discerned because it said that it, the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So they have to be sharp, vigilant, be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove, sober. We talked about being so. All these things we've been learning about what it means to be uh, sober, not drunk on the world. Hallelujah. We just talked about being sober the other day. Uh, be of good behavior, of good behavior, given to hospitality and apt to teach. It means he, this is, this is, a, this is a man of God, a uh, servant of God that is really, and that's a lot, Okay. Now, it says the husband of one wife, ver uh, vigilant, sober, good behavior, given to hospitality, and apt to teach. Okay, and now we talk about gender here. It says in Christ, you neither male nor female. So this specific, specific office and gifts is talking about in Christ and come and be baptized into the body and forevermore. By. And this here, um, when he says the... Uh, in Christ is neither male nor female, okay? Now, it's talking about in Christ. So this position can be held by anyone who's in Christ because you're no longer male or female. You are in the realm of the spirit. That's what it's saying here. Not given to wine. Not given to wine. Now, until told Timothy, take a little wine for your stomach's sake, Okay? But it said this person who's in the office of a bishop should not be given to wine, nor a striker. Uh, it means he's with his hand. You know, you're striking somebody. He's beating uh, some people whose uh, positions as um, as uh, leaders. They are physically hitting and, and beating and beating. They, they're just no striker. Okay. Uh, and it's strike with the vish or striking with just, uh, it's like an ability to fight. Or even if you're not fighting physically, you could be fighting verbally, but they're striking. 
greedy or filthy lucre. Greedy. Okay. Greedy or filthy lucre because the servant of God is going to be supplied. He's the ox that's trading out the corn and, the, and that person, God will supply. God will cause men to give unto his servant, oh God, because he said in the scriptures that if they give him a drink of water, that God will repay. If you give a bishop a drink of water, whatever you give a prophet uh, in the name of a prophet, you'll get that reward. So it's saying here, greedy of, not to be greedy of filthy lucre, but patient. Patient. Not a brawler or covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Okay? So this is that if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church? Not a novice. That means he's just got saved. He just, no, he got to grow up in Christ. He got to grow up in, in the knowledge of the truth. He got to grow up in his position. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, less being uh, lifted up with pride. It means he's not enough. So he's going to be a tried vessel. He's going to be a vessel who have uh, moved on from milk to meat, having his senses exercised. This has been a tried and a proven vessel. It says not a novice. Not a novice. Lest he be lifted up with pride because we talked the other day when the Spirit of God come upon you. You can feel the power of God. It is nothing like the presence of God uh, uh, coming, who's in the vessel. And then uh, uh, when he was ministering, uh, uh um, Bishop Owens, I watched him as he's a bishop, and Bishop Owens in the Mount Calvary Holy Church of America, when he would come with the word, with the sword of the spirit, with the food for the sheep, I, he wasn't like, uh, like you say, rambunctious, but you could feel the presence as God began to speak to him. I watched, thank you Jesus people, when, because I love the word. And I watch Bishop Owens, and I watch Bishop Crump too, and I watch them as the Spirit moved through them, as a, it came not with just a letter, but with the Spirit. And Bishop Owens really—that's why he was the Archbishop because the Lord flowed through him, and that's why he says, "Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil." Because when you get up in that realm, there are temptations. <laughs> It says Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. And what did the enemy tempt him with? He's going to tempt these uh, uh, leaders too. You know, it took him up to the pentacle. You see all these kingdoms of the world? I'll give them. He, he tempts tempt the, leader, the leaders, okay? Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. That means the unsaved. They, the unsaved should not be able to say, this I this bishop because he if he becomes a bishop too quick, and he and the people who are without will see him, he becomes a uh, 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 he fall into condemnation of the devil, because he he's he's uh, uh, moving to the level of a bishop, and therefore he's going to be like uh, uh, tried by the de the devil himself because it says okay, lest it says moreover he must have a good report of them that without. Sometimes people or God is moving into the position of being a bishop, but they have to wait. It says wait on some things you have to wait on until you are, are, are forged, until you are, 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 are ready to move into that realm, okay? Unless he fall into reproach and snare of the devil. Now, he didn't use the devil twice here. Uh, condemnation of the devil or reproach and the snare of the devil. So the devil sets a trap for them, okay? It says... Uh, Likewise, must be. Uh, well, we're going to go. We're going to start with the bishop because this this is First uh, Timothy, uh, verses one down to seven. Okay, and this is starting with the bishop. And the reason we are starting with the, the heads and those in positions and apostleship, and um, we see this goes back to uh, Romans the twelfth chapter. And so we are just going to cover Timothy now. First Timothy, the third chapter. I keep trying to run past this here, but really, I think the ministry class that, that Bishop Crump said, when they are going to be a minister, they need to have, anyone who's going to be a minister need to have these instructions of what 
it means to be in position, what it means. This has to be taught to everybody who wants to be a minister. Thank you, Jesus. You, I want to be a minister. I want to be in position as a, as a, 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 a even the, the, the apostles is the one who's dealing with the doctrine. So you can't be on the level of an apostle and not able to teach those who are coming into the ministry. That's what I'm saying. And you can't be a bishop unless you got a good reputation. This is what it's saying here. Now, we're not even going down to the Lord helps like me. <laughs> That's why when you sit under someone, they can not only have the, they, he told Timothy. We're going to do it with Timothy too. Timothy, um, that was the first chapter, but I want to go to Timothy, the second uh, chapter, because um, Paul is telling Timothy in the second chapter, to uh, talking about the gifts. It's uh, verses uh, 6 and 7. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in given thee by the putting of, of my hands. Paul said, I lay hands. So that when you're in the level of an apostle, this is apostolic. Uh, Paul is an apostle. You can lay hands on people to receive the Holy Spirit. The Bible said they, when you're in the level of apostle or bishop, you can lay hands. And in fact, he says they laid hands on them and the spirit came upon them. We talk about in the spiritual realm, but now Paul is telling Timothy, a greetings, a, um, greetings, greatly desiring to see that uh, you being uh, mindful of your, thy tears and that you may be filled with joy that I call to remember the unfringed faith that is in thee. So Paul recognized the faith that was in, and that's what the apostles and the prophets do. They're not the apostles and the uh, um and the bishops. Okay, they do this as helping the the, the uh, development. They become the ones who help mentor those who are moving up in those realms. Okay, it's so when I call to remember the in unfringe faith that is in thee. Um, first uh, in your grandmother and then in your mother. And I was persuaded. I was, Paul said, I was persuaded it was in you. So that means that the bishops and the uh, apostles, they can see this soul. See, if you can discern demons, you can surely see this person is, is growing in Christ. This cr cr person is hungry for Christ. They're going to nurture you. Okay. And it says, uh, for wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hand. Paul said, I laid hands on you because I saw what was growing in you. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony. So he's, he's mentoring. He's helping him to grow up. And which going back to the, the jobs of the bishop. Okay, the jobs of those who, who are ruling the house of God. Paul Basuk was talking about who is watching over the sheep, who is feeding the sheep. Thank you, Jesus. And when I, um, I know my Bishop Bryant, Roy Bryant in the Bible Church of Christ, I see him take people from drugs, I mean heroin addicts, and how God ministered to those spirits through him, and those vessels was cleaned, and they was educated, and I saw that in Bishop Owens. That's why when Bishop Owens was getting ready to speak, I would sit down. I would sit down and hear because I, you, you knew, and everybody was waiting to hear from him. They were waiting to hear from the man of God because he did not just have the letter. But you, I who knew it was by the power of God, I'm getting emotional. I'm getting emotional. The reason I'm getting emotional is because a lot of people are sitting and ruling and they're not in the realm of, of where they should be when they take that position. They take that uh, uh, position in the flock and they're not ready. They're not ready. They're really not ready because they can't lay hands and impart gifts. They can't lay hands and you receive the Holy Spirit. They don't have good. So this is what I'm thinking here. As we go into, I'm studying this, but. Is getting to me too, because so many people who take the letter and run with it, or they are put in position and they are not ready. And I'm telling you, I've been here saved since 24 years old. And it's almost 50 years ago, y'all. Okay. Cause I'm 73. So that's 49 years ago. 
that God saved me. And it was under the power of the unction of the Holy Spirit, which we said you can get the letter and serve, but it's not just about service. It's about, about, about the, the spirit of God in you. Some people want to substitute uh, sacrifices and service for the, the uh, spirit of God. You can't substitute it because it's a spiritual warfare. Okay, so we're going to stop here. We're talking about the bishop and we're talking about the apostles and we're talking about uh, the gifts being stirred up. Okay, and this is what Paul said and the ability to go on and lay hands. And so the apostles and then the pastors and the bishops, which you're talking about the bishops first. And we are here. I'm getting emotional. See, I, in these last days, I'm getting really emotional, y'all. It's because so many people, you know, they haven't gone through what Timothy, First Timothy, uh, talked about. They are not. They are in position, which is not good for the people who are under them. It's really not good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I remember Bishop Davis in Hartsville. Bishops who who know how to wield the soul, who can cast out, who is the, the, the gifts and calling. It talk about Christ giving gifts. That's what Romans 12, uh, chapter verse 6, talking about the gifts of God. Talking about the gifts. That's what that is talking about. The sixth verse of the 12th chapter of Romans. Talk about the gifts. And if one of the gifts that we got there talking about the gifts of God and all this is what we stand on the gifts. What are the gifts of God are for the edifying of the church, the upbuilding of the church. This is what the gifts for. The gifts are there, and it's talking that clearly. You can't be a novice. You can't be a babe. You can't just be, I'm just starting, and I'm handsome, I'm good looking. And But what about the, the spirits that you've got to deal with? What about these babes you got to grow up? Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to stop here. My husband's up already, so I got to go deal with my wife's stuff. But I want you to think about this here, not to be a novice, okay? Uh, you're talking about the sevenfold spirits of God, having those spirits, you know, uh, the spirit of God, talking about the sevenfold gifts of uh, spirits of God, which Isaiah 11 is really having on the spirit of, uh, of God, the, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding. All this is talking about the sevenfold uh, gifts of the spirit of God working through you. And, and and not to um not to go too quick until you mature. And then the spirit will say, We'll let you know. Like when they got ready to um uh to put uh, replace Judas, they sought the Holy Spirit. Who is who is on this level as a, to be an apostle? Okay, who is on this level? Because nobody can well you can see according to uh, Timothy, you can see if a person ain't is is don't have a good reputation, okay? Uh 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 must be, have a good report of them which are without. People who are outside of the church. They, you got to have a good, this is the word of God. I mean, some people can twist it and say, well, we can leave that part out. But that's this written. It's written in the scriptures. So if written in the scriptures, how can you get around it? How can you get around it? So we're going to close out. And it says, <clears throat> the song, are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Come and be baptized into the body and forevermore abide. So we're going to stop here because I got to go to my wife. I'm going to deal with my husband. <clears throat> and so um, I pray as we continue on, that is tying in with Romans 12 and 6, talking about the gifts. The gifts of God are without repentance. But we see, according to the scriptures, which there's a lot of scriptures, who qualifies for these positions. It says the qualification of the elders and the deacons is in chapter three. So we're stopping at the bishop and we're going to go down and deal with the qualifications of the elders and the deacons next. Okay. So we're stopping with the bishop. Okay. So we're looking for the qualifications. That's what we're looking at this here scripture. Let's see what makes them qualify. So we stopped at verse um, uh, seven. And then we're going to go on what qualifies us to be a deacon and what qualifies us to be an elder. Okay, so let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you. First of all, you are the author and the finish of our faith. You are the one that baptized us into the body.
And you are the one that's, uh, hallelujah, that is helping us to grow up in you. Having our senses exercised, Lord God, to be able to discern good from evil. All of our ministries, Lord, is dependent on our yielding to thy Holy Spirit, which would lead and guide us into all truth. We thank you for every bishop that you have uh, uh, sharpened and every bishop that you have given the power and the authority to rule, Lord God, in your church. My God, as they submit themselves to you, we thank you for all those who you have qualified. And those who are in position prematurely, help them to go back and wait, on wait, Lord God, until you uh, uh, endure them with power from on high. As you told your disciples, go tarry and wait until you endure. Some in that realm need to have more uh, 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 uh washing and cleansing and teaching my god hallelujah we pray for every single one that's in position we talked about pastors you see it in the old testament there's a lot of pastors that's fleecing your sheep they are not even appointed by you lord we're not judging you are the judge we just speak in your word this morning we thank you for every bishop and everyone that you that uh have set in position and, and give them this course to them, Lord God, and give them, them this position. We pray for their strength. We thank and praise you, Lord God, for them being able to exercise the gifts and calling in their life as we commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen. So we did it with the bishop. Okay. Okay. And so we stopped with the bishop. And um, Timothy probably turned out to be a bishop too. Okay. <laughs> because he was on the apostle Paul who said, he, we know these people moved on to grow up, to be able with a good reputation. And so that's why he said when they're young, the, 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 the bishops can see this is a young soul. And I don't want him two times in their last, their thing to talk about, um, not he shall, uh, uh, with, uh, that he be not lifted up with pride and he fall into the condemnation of the devil. And then they say uh, uh, that he have a good, uh, um, that he, fall, uh, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the, so the enemy is after the leaders, is after those, okay, can say two times they use the word devil in there, the devil is after them, because they're in the realm up there, that they can wield the sword of the spirit, so, and they really, you can't get this just by being a, a, a um, gift for gab, you got to have the power of God, I'll tell you, Bishop Owens is, I don't ever see him being loud, but whenever he gets ready to speak, I sit down and get my Bible <laughs> and I sit there and listen. And you can, the presence of God is flowing, thank you, Jesus, through those uh, vessels who are now ready to wield the sword and to feed the flock. Okay? I, I mean, I've been 49 years, and I can tell you that on, on a few bishops that I've seen and sat under where the presence of God is evident. The presence of God and the power of God is evident. It's few. Thank you, Jesus. So this is right here. This this is my, I mean, I know you probably said, who are you? <laughs> I'm a little, like the little birds waiting for some food. Mm, I want to eat. <laughs> I want to eat. I want to eat. Because you live by the bread of God. Thank you, Jesus. You live by the bread of God. Thank you, Jesus. Because if you don't have the bread of God in you, you won't live. You know how about man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds. Like if you don't have somebody feeding your soul, thank you, Jesus. Back here in your soul shall live. If you don't have the person ministering to you and under the unction and power of the Holy Spirit, Thank you. I thank God he has helped me to get to the place where, <laughs> and it came through the word. You grow in grace and in the knowledge of the truth. You grow in God through the word of God. You grow in God through the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. That's how you grow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we over here dealing with the bishop. <laughs> First Timothy 3 verses 1. Through seven, and then we went back to Timothy when he told him to stir up the gift. Okay, told Timothy to stir up the gift that's in you, stir it up. Okay, so stir it up, and you got to start getting this gift that's in you. You got to start exercising that gift, having your senses exercised. You got to start exercising, and that's why he told Timothy, "Don't be fearful." 
God haven't given you the spirit of fear because I'm telling you, when you first start moving and these demons is coming after you, because this, this here bishop has been tested. When they start coming and testing you and they, my God, like they did with Paul. He's meek in the presence of us. But in the word, in the letter, he's, 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 he's got this here uh, bold letter. But in the presence, and Paul said, I'm glad I was meek because I want to use my authority. I don't want to use my authority that God gave me. <laughs> I don't want to use it for destruction. That's a level when you talk about on the level of a bishop. You can, when you're on the level of a bishop, you can say like Apostle Paul. You can say, I don't want to use my gift. That's why I think Bishop Owens is so quiet. You know, you, I seen Bishop David. That's Bishop, bi different bishops. I see they they not even moved. Hallelujah! When you go, they because they know in whom they have the authority. And Bishop, um, we see Apostle uh, Paul said, "I don't want to use it. I want to use it for edification, and not for destruction, because they do have the power for destruction to bless and to curse." Now, people on the other level, I got the. But you got to go past this uh, third chapter of First Timothy, verse one through seven in this realm. It was there's more. Well, so we sort of see people talking about I'm doing certain things, but I'm telling you, y'all, I, I am. <laughs> I'm still dealing with this uh, um, pollen, y'all. We're gonna close out, and we're gonna keep on going, and we're dealing with the bishop. We're gonna stick with uh, First Timothy, the third chapter, and we're gonna re this referring back to Romans twelve. Chapter verse six, talking about the gifts, the gifts of God. This is what we're going to deal with the gifts because that's in the 12th chapter of Romans. Thank God for my uh, uh, sister in Christ. Let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you. Help us not to go too fast. <laughs> Help us to get understanding that the debacle shit, this word will fall down deep in the very depths of our soul. So we'll be able to discern. We talked about discernment the other day. Hallelujah. Even with those who are sitting over you, Lord God, being able to see, Lord God, hallelujah. These scriptures give us ability to see. It's as a lamp and a light unto our path. As we walk in and we can see through the word. Lord God, hallelujah, that we won't be snared and, 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 and tripped up and, and fall. We understand the scripture. And all those who are in leadership need to read these scriptures too. We all need to know what does it mean to be a bishop? What does it mean to be an apostle? By God, hallelujah. What does it mean to be a, 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 a prophet? What does it mean? That's what we're going We're talking about the gifts now. We actually, oh God, continue to use us. And if we are running too fast, help us to slow down. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and not run before you, but wait on the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your gifts and calling throughout the household of faith, throughout the body of Christ. As we yield to you, our body, soul, and spirit, it's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Please push the like button. Encourage someone else to go along. And the song says, Are you in the church triumphant? Are you in the Savior's bride? Come and be baptized into the body and forevermore abide. Okay, that's where we are now. Okay, so we're giving God the praise. I know you're something. See, that's why we were in the Bible school. You, 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 you had two hours of teaching, and then you had some people said we need more than one day. And anybody in the ministry, they need a ministry leading class. They need to teach the ministers because the, the word is the sword of the spirit, and they need to sharpen the. I mean, this is my opinion, y'all. Okay, and I think this opinion is based on the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Iron sharpening iron. So the bishops can sharpen you. The, the, uh, the apostles can sharpen you. Thank you, Jesus. They can pop sharpen you because they are in that realm. Okay, this is my opinion, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. So please push the like button. I'm telling you, I'm, the more you look into the scripture as a mirror, first of all, I know I am just a little babe. I'm just learning. But I'm hungry for the word, and I sit underneath rulers, and people and Lord told me you can't go higher than those over you. So those who over me, I need them to be like this bishop here. <laughs> so they can lay hands like Apostle Paul said to Peter, I lay hands on you for the gifts. <laughs> I know lay hands on me to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So this is I mean, this is I'm telling y'all, this is my opinion. Okay. Please let's pray for each other. Pray for the body of Christ. Pray for every single member, and especially those who are moving up in the ministry. 
Okay? And they, they would be sharpened. Iron sharpening iron. Okay? Iron sharpening iron. That's important too. And the gifts and calling are without repentance. They are for the edifying and the upbuilding of the, which we learned already. already. Okay? And Paul said, they not to, to condemn, but to edify. That's what the gift. So we're going to deal with edification because we need to understand how can you edify someone? Thank you, Jesus. And you look over here in Timothy 3. Okay, serious. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm laughing, but it's not funny. Okay. And the, I got some more. Um, the good work and building blame is good and a good behavior. Okay. Not giving. You no, know, this is important because you got to know those who have ruled over you. The Bible said, know those. That's another scripture that's coming to me. Know those who have ruled over you. Know those who have ruled over you. And I can tell you in one hand, the bishops that I say, I got a problem. And I need the Spirit of God on me. And they can lay hands on me and thank you, Jesus. And you can feel the power of God come through these vessels. Thank you, Jesus. You've got to know those who have ruled over you. This is my opinion. That's what the Lord given me. Know those who have ruled over you. And that's what we're talking about now. That's what we're going to put this here, starting with this section of Romans 12, 6, with the gifts, with the under the title, Know Those Who Have Ruled Over You. Okay. Let's go, South Jesus, again. Thank you, Lord. Help us, Father, in the name of Jesus. You are Lord over your house, and everyone that you have not positioned in them, they have authority. Move them. Lord God, there is your sheep, and you are Lord, and we are those who by so you have not placed in a position, Lord. Help them quickly, ASAP, be out of the way. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> that they don't cast a stumbling block before your people. We pray your will, your way, and your word will be done in us and through us. It's in Jesus' name we pray, pray and count it done. So we're praying. If you're not in position by the God, I'm just praying. I'm praying. Lord, they're not in position, and, and if they are, and then you are raising them up to do that, then let them sit underneath the bishops and the apostles and get taught. Let them sit under the power of the Holy Spirit. Let hands be laid on them. Thank you, Jesus. Let them. And some of them, have, I thank God, have a wonderful hearts because you do need a heart of a pastor. You need to have a pastor's heart. You need to have a shepherd's heart. For God to use you. And then you can he, you can be taught. And you can be written. Because you got to have. Like David was a man after God's own heart. Okay. That's what God wants you to have his heart. And be heart, heart for the people. And then you can be used by God in these realms. But you still got to study. You still got to study. You still got to have bishops and people to impart in gifts unto you. This is scripture. Okay. Anyway, I'm going off again. I'm going here and see about my husband. You know, came up here already. Be blessed and continue to walk in victory in Jesus' name. Push the like button and encourage us to come along. Be blessed.